you may then encounter um, a, a traditional practice of herbal medicine that uses something that we call energetics, that I call energetics. Um, other people use the word energy or energetics to mean that like spiritual plant spirit thing I was just talking about. Um, but I, I am using this word as it is defined by people who practice Chinese medicine and Ayurveda to talk about something different. Something that I'm going to call the phenomenology of herbs and herbal medicine. And phenomenology is a branch of philosophy that is concerned with the beingness of experience itself. What is it like to be a human? What is it like in our bodies and our hearts and our minds? And what are we, what are we actually experiencing? And what's the subjective experience like? And then what can we learn and apply from that subjective experience? And what does our subjective experience have to do with the nature of existence itself? So needless to say, I find that really fascinating. You can probably tell by my excitement talking about it. But why I think it's so important to talk about herbal energetics is because this is the way that human beings have worked with herbs for the longest period of time. The scientific tradition is relatively new in um, the history of our species and of our planet. New things offer tremendous gifts and have science has allowed us to make progress in ways that we never could have um, without it. But this older way of working with and understanding herbs has a level of sophistication in terms of helping us to match plants and people together that nothing in the scientific tradition has yet approached. To the extent that there's any comfort in the idea that humans have been using herbs as long as we've been humans and um, since even before we were humans because our um, animal cousins use herbs medicinally too. To the extent that there's any amount of safety or comfort in that, it flies out the window as soon as we start doing totally different things with herbs and not being informed by the very traditions that have persisted for thousands of years. This is why I think the heart of herbal practice is an energetic approach to understanding and working with herbs. I want you to think about what it's like when you, let's think of something that's really um, clear. Um, it's a hot day and you take a, a big scoop of mint chocolate chip ice cream and eat it and let it melt on your tongue. I want you to really think about what that's like. It can be coconut ice cream. <laughs> it can be mint galactica coconut bliss, which is my favorite. <laughs> it can be any kind of ice cream that you like. And the obvious thing that happens, right, is that you feel a cooling sensation. You feel cooling and you feel um, kind of like dampness, moisture. You feel like your throat is being coated by um, the ice cream as it like goes down. Um, or think about what happens if you're drinking a hot cup of ginger tea. You feel some heat. And it's not just the temperature of the tea itself. It's like you get a little heat in the back of your throat from the ginger, especially if it's a dried ginger. Um, this is what I'm talking about when I speak about energetics. It's not some vague, impossible to sense, woo-woo kind of thing. It's like literally, what is your experience as you ingest this plant? Do you feel it cool you down? Do you feel it warm you up? Do you feel it lifting you? Like, do you feel an upward motion? As I felt yesterday when I was, I was eating um, a, a very thin lentil soup that I made with tons of astragalus root in it. And um, I felt a 
a very clear sensation of lifting up of my abdomen, like uplift. Do you feel um, a downward moving energy, like you're calmed and sedated? Do you feel um, that you start to sweat? All of these are energetic effects of herbs. And what these traditions do, whether they are indigenous traditions from the Americas, whether they are um, the Ayurvedic tradition coming out of um, the Indian subcontinent, whether it is the traditional Chinese system, whether it is Japanese Kampo, whether it is um, traditional Korean medicine, whether um, we're talking about traditional Thai medicine, um, and I imagine many other um, classical traditions from around the world that I don't know, what we tend to find is that there is a system for classifying the experiences that people have when they use an herb along with the effects that map onto those experiences. And then a system of assessing a human being to notice, well, is this the kind of person who is always cold and um, very thin and, and weakened, who needs to be warmed up and bolstered and boosted? Or is this a person who is loud and red-faced and always full of energy and can't sit still, who needs to be um, cooled and who needs to be purged of some of this heat um, and relaxed and cooled and calmed? And so we will go much deeper into this kind of approach and into these traditions next month when we explore actually um, Ayurveda and uh, Chinese medicine and Western herbal medicine. And we'll talk about all of these things in great depth. But for now, I want to simply say that if you are starting to learn herbs and um, or you're working with a practitioner and you're not getting any feedback or you're not learning anything about like, well, this warms or this cools or this moves out or this moves in. If you're not linking up anything of your actual physical experience of the plant to the functions that that plant serves in the body, then in my opinion, you're missing the most useful tool that you can have. So it's easy to fix this. As soon as you start playing with herbs in any way, ask yourself, what am I experiencing as I drink this tea? 